Hello class, this is Dr. Fenton. In this video, I'd like to show you how to record journal entries. These are also called general journal entries, but it means the same thing. Journal entries are used to first record financial activities into the accounting records. It follows the same uh, accounting format as assets equal liabilities plus stock or equity. That's the uh, accounting equation. And also we need to remember the rules that debits always equal credits. So let me bring up my spreadsheet. Here it is. And the first one you can see I already have entered. Um, in the general journal, you'll have a place for either a date or the entry number, the account name. I already have cash and common stock entered. And then the debit and the credit. I just threw down a dollar just, just for an example. But you could say cash was uh, taken in at $100,000 and then you'd have to credit common stock $100,000. So you can see in the first entry what we do is always show the debit first, the account name of the debit first, enter the dollar amount in a debit column, then show the common stock uh, account name, in this case the, the credit listed second, with the dollar amount in the credit column. So always list the debit first over to the left of this line, indent a little bit, and enter the credit name first. Oh, credit name second. Sorry about that. So there's an example of an entry. And let me show you another one. Let's say that uh, entry number two, we're going to buy some inventory with this, um, with this cash. So we're going to debit the inventory account. And let's say we spent oh, um, uh, $2,000. And we're going to credit, or $20,000, I guess that uh, entered, uh, $20,000. And we're going to uh, use cash to buy this, so we'll credit cash. 20. Okay. So there's an entry. Again, the, the date, the account name, you know, the date or the entry number, the account name for the debit over here to the left, the account name for the credit, indented, indented a little bit, and the dollar amount for the debit and for the credit. When you're preparing entries, uh, it's, it's best to leave a, 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 an extra row or a line in between entries just so they're not all jammed together and they'll look a lot better. So entry number three, let's say that we go to the bank and borrow some money. So cash is coming into the company. Let's say we borrow $50,000. And now we're going to credit notes payable. The bank made a sign a note. We'll be paying interest on this note, so we need to set up the liability notes payable. So you can see that that the debits we have will always equal the credits for individual transactions and overall. The accounting equation still holds true because if you think about it, where you have assets are equal to liabilities plus owner's equity, cash is an asset, and that's equal to an increase in the common stock account, which is a stockholder's equity account and the dollar amount is the same. In this entry, the accounting equation still holds true even though we have two asset accounts that are affected. Nothing will be on the right side of the accounting equation. There are no liabilities and no stockholders equity accounts affected with this, with this transaction. We are increasing one asset account inventory and we are decreasing another asset account cash because we are using cash to purchase inventory another asset. Another example would be in number four, let's pay for an expense. Let's pay the utilities expense. And let's pay, oh, $500. And let's uh, use cash to pay this. 500, whoops, 500, there we go. And you just call, keep going with, with various entries. Uh, let's say entry number five will be to, um, let's uh, buy some supplies on account. So supplies is an asset account. Notice I'm not saying supplies expense here. Supplies expense will be where we are using up assets and, uh, you know, using up supplies. And that'll be in an adjusting entry. Let's buy um, $3,000 worth the supplies on account. So when it says on account, we will use accounts payable. Uh, 
there we go. Okay, accounts payable, $3,000. So in this entry, we have an asset account supplies increased, and we also have liabilities increased. And that was very similar to us borrowing money up here, where the cash account, which is asset account, increased, and liabilities decreased. Now, accounts payable we'll use for buying items like this from our suppliers. It can be inventory and supplies, those type of things. But if you get into other liabilities, such as salaries that you owe, utilities that you owe, taxes that you owe, go ahead and use those accounts, um, those account names with the payable out to the side. So, for example, you would use salaries payable, utilities payable, and taxes payable. So those are examples. Uh, oh, let me show one more for like a revenue account. So entry six, let's provide services to a customer and let's collect uh, cash at this time. So let's collect uh, 7,000 cash. And we will have service revenue, 7,000. We are increasing both of these accounts. So you increase the asset account cash with a debit and following the debit credit rule, you increase the service revenue account with a credit. One more entry just to show you the difference. If we provide services to customers on account, they are not paying us cash right now, so we need to, to debit increase accounts receivable. Uh, let's say that was $8,000. We still earned the money though, so we will still credit service revenue. $8,000. So those are some, some examples of entries. Um, follow the, the, the patterns just like this. Always debit the item first, um, you know, the cash account or inventory, whatever it is. The, the debits go first, the credits go next. You can get into entries when you get a little bit more advanced and you will have maybe a couple of debits and then a couple of credits. All in one transaction. But you need to make sure no matter you know, how many debits or credits you have in a, a single transaction, the total dollar amount of the debits you would have must equal the total dollar amounts of the credits. So that's a quick review of general journal entries. So good luck with your studies.